just wanted to say a huge, huge warm welcome and a huge, huge warm thank you to everyone that has tuned in recently. It has meant so, 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 so much to me. Um, and I, yeah, I'm super, super excited that you're all excited about knitting and knitting things. And yeah, thank you again so, so much. Hello and welcome back or welcome to the Knitting Page Podcast. My name's Paige and I'm the face behind the Knitting Page Podcast. So today's video, I want to try out a new video style. And by that, I mean, I'm not going to do a trends. I'm not going to do a knitting plans. I'm not going to do a traditional podcast. I want to call this video the Knitting Pages 3, 2, 1. And this is a video style that I want to try to release every month. Um, and so I got this idea from like the self-help optimization, um, like sustainable excellence side of Twitter. And I forget who came up with it, but basically it's like every day you'll do a three, two, one. And your three is like three little tasks that you want to get done in a day. So like maybe it's like the dishes, putting away laundry. And like for me, I have low iron. So it's like, okay, I want to take my iron pill. And then your two is like two medium tasks. Um, so for example, when I was writing my undergraduate thesis, it was like, okay, I want to like write for half an hour on my thesis would be one. And then the other one would be like, okay, I want to take my dog for a run. And then your one is like your non-negotiable, non-negotiable for that day. So like maybe I have a lab due tomorrow and it's like, okay, I need to finish my lab by tomorrow. Um, so that's kind of like the school perspective of a three, two, one, but yeah, three little tasks, two medium tasks and your one non-negotiable. Um, so today's format isn't going to be about tasks and getting things done, but my three, two, one is going to be every month. I want to focus on sharing three patterns that I'm loving. I may have them on my needles. I may not, but patterns that I think are really nice um, and that have kind of caught my eye recently. I want to share two designers um, and I'm really going to try to focus on like up and coming designers and like stay away from petite knit and my favorite things knitwear. I love them. Um, I, well, I love their designs. I know there's some like ethical issues with My Free Things Knitwear and some of her earlier designs. But I'm gonna try to focus on up and coming designers um, because I think some of them make really great designs and I wanna share that love and I'm hoping you can find their designs interesting too and help support them. Um, because there are certain designs like a basic t-shirt that are designed by a plethora of different people and although Petite Knit and My Free Things Knitwear design really pretty ones, Sometimes it's nice to support someone smaller. So yeah. And the last one that it's going to focus on is one yarn that I would like to try or that I am trying. I may have it in my stash. I may not have it in the stash, but one yarn that I'm like curious about or intrigued about based on that month. So today is July 11th. And so what part of what you're seeing, um, one of, one of the patterns that I'm sharing is not at all summer related, but it's one that really caught my eye and she does have a summer top coming out soon. Um, but I've kind of been thinking about, I'm so sorry if that is really loud. My boyfriend is mowing the lawn, but I am kind of thinking about some fall knits, even though I am obsessed with summer. Um, mostly knits where I'd be holding something with mohair because I have a few sweater slash cardigan quantities of mohair in my stash that I'm excited to work on this fall. And before I get started on my three, two, one, I feel like I'm committing a crime because I'm not wearing a knitted garment of mine. Um, I threw on this like Sophie scarf that I made last summer in, in a hundred percent DK weight alpaca that my best friend brought back for me for one of her vacations, uh, like way, way back, like in high school, like seven years ago. Um, but finally got around to using it, made this cute little Sophie scarf and I figured it kind of matched the dress that I have on now. So I don't usually wear my hair like this. Let me know if you like it. I have like, I'm like, I don't know. I've got crazy curly hair and I'm trying to tame it without it being, yeah. So anyways, I'm wearing a Sophie scarf. That is my knitwear for today. Um, but I did 
want to get started on my three, two, one. So first off, I will be talking about three patterns that I have been loving. Sorry, I'm also just going to be looking over here because that is where my computer is. But the first pattern that I have been loving is called the All Good Dress. And this is by Magdalena Parker. It came out last August, so August 2022. And she knits it in Knitting for Olive Merino Cotton. So fingering weight, it's gonna be a lot of knitting. The gauge is 28 stitches and 48, 28 stitches and 40 rows per 10 centimeters. It's knit on three millimeter needles. So the size range is from extra, extra small until double XL. The garment is recommended to be worn with 30 centimeters of positive ease. So it's like very nice and overflowy, very nice and yeah, very nice and flowy oversized. That's what I was going for. Um, and so it has bust circumference of 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 110, and 120. So it's not super size inclusive, um, which I'm very sorry. I kind of just wanted to sit down and film this and I honestly didn't even look at the, the size for until now. And that is something that I will be conscious of moving forward. But I'm already started, I'm already here and I'm trying to produce more videos because I think it's fun. And so the all good dress is, I'm just going to read you the description. The all good dress is a classic design featuring straight cut and clean lines. It is worked in stockinette stitch from the top down with back increases, creating a slightly boxy silhouette. And so, I mean, in her pattern, as you can see here, it is a maxi dress, but I think you could adjust this to like any suitable length if it's you. I guess it's maxi slash midi, depending on what your definition is of, of the two. Um, but it's, it's pretty yarn hungry. So the small size, which is that extra small with it, um, or extra, extra small is 2,250 meters. Um, and the double XL is 4,000 meters of knitting for olive merino. Um, and so I, obviously you can use any sort of merino or like any sort of merino, any sort of fingering weight. Um, I think it could be nice in a cotton merino for a, a summer look. And there is 30 centimeters of positive ease. So, you know, if you didn't want it that baggy, you could always size down. Um, I don't know if you'd want it much more baggy than that. That is like, that's an extra foot around you. Um, so yeah, this dress popped up um, or came into my, came into my mind, came into my life through Knits by Autumn. Uh, she recently made a post wearing her all good dress and I thought it was super lovely. I thought it would be super wearable, super timeless. Um, it's a lot of stockinette, so I know some people really don't love stockinette, you know, to each their own. But the All Good Dress by Magdalena Parker, um, and I believe Magdalena Parker, let me just look. Yeah, so I get, she does have a decent following. She has 80.2 thousand followers on Instagram. And there are, there are currently only 19 projects on Ravelry. I mean, it's a bit of a beast to tackle, but I do think that it's super lovely and that if you were to commit that much time to it, I, I do think it's a classic timeless piece that you'd have in your wardrobe. So the All Good Dress by Magdalena Parker is my first design. My second design is by Louisa Rekopf. I may be saying her last name wrong, but she is knitting.deer on Instagram. And she is a fairly new designer. She's fairly small, but she makes beautiful patterns. So she had like a Sophie, or Sophie, a Lucy blouse and Lucy top that I think was popular a bit last summer. I know I saw it um, on Ravelry and was like, ooh, that's so pretty, but I believe it's knit in a brioche stitch. Brioche stitch. But the minnow cardigan is this beautiful half fisherman's rib and cable cardigan as you can see here and i just think that it's like that perfect combo of texture and like a classic design um and so she actually recently it, the top should be out by the time i post this but she recently came out with the minnow top which is that same pattern but in a tank top for a summer garment um and i'm thinking of making one maybe not this summer but next summer it's definitely in my queue and on my radar, but I do, this pattern came, well, A, I, I'm doing a test knit for knitting.deer, um, or for Louisa, I'm doing the Merle T test knit, um, but 
when I saw the cardigan, when I was like looking through her other designs, I was like, that is, I should slow that down. When I was looking through her other designs, I was like, that cardigan is so beautiful. And I think I do love stockinette, but I also do like having um, a garment on the go that does take a bit more focus and alternating between the two or like seven, as you'll sometimes see on here. Um, but I think that this garment would be a labor of love and I think it, it is just so beautiful. Um, and I, I came to it because it came from my feed because I, I believe it got, yeah, it got published June, 2023. So last month, um, and it is made with a fingering and a lace weight. And so one second, I have my little bin of some of them are mohair, like this is knitting for all of mohair. And then some of them, this is the uh, Kema Rose Midnight Tassel or something like that, which is an al alpaca one. But I have, I have like a sweater's quantity of each. Um, and so I've been kind of like just in the back of my head, like getting a bit planned for fall. Um, and I think this is one that I will definitely be knitting this fall. I don't know what color, but it is one that I love. And I think, I think it'll just be super wearable. Um, so yeah, it is knit with a fingering and a mohair held together. Um, she used Knitting for All of Merino and Lena Grossa Seta Suri. So I guess it's not a mohair, she used a Suri. Um, but it is 25 stitches and 36 rows gauge. Um, and that's in that half fisherman's rib and cable chart pattern. And it's knit on four millimeter, it's knit on four millimeter needles I'm assuming for the body and then it has this beautiful double knit band and I'm assuming that's where that three millimeter needle comes in and so again not the most extensive size range so the bust circumference of the cardigan is ranges from 88 to 163 centimeters and it's recommended to have a positive ease of five to 15 centimeters. So I guess that would correspond to around like an 80 to like a 150 centimeter bust. There are six sizes, so it's not, you're not getting, you have to kind of like choose whether to size up or size down, but it does have quite a large size range in terms of bust that it accommodates. So it would be designed anywhere from an 158 centimeter bust down to an 83, or I guess down to a 88 minus 15, 73 centimeter bust, um, depending on how oversized you would like it. So I will read you the description. The Minot cardigan is a cozy yet elegant cardigan with beautifully alternating half fisherman's rib and a cable stitch. It will be worked top down without sewing, starting with the back and from there proceeding with the two fronts. Below the arms, all three parts will be combined and worked until the desired length is achieved. A one by one rib will be added to give you a nice finishing touch. Both drop shoulder sleeves will be worked by picking up stitches. So yeah, it's a drop shoulder cardigan, one by one half fisherman's rib, and then that double knitted button band um, that I know is really popular, I believe on the champagne cardigan. A lot of people have been doing it on the April cardigan. This is that little extra flair and texture with the Minot cardigan. Um, but yeah, I think it's beautiful. Uh, and there there are a few other, like one girl, I believe she knit it in Katia Concept, which is like a, a blown yarn with cotton in it. So there are a few other um, projects on Ravelries to get different yarn examples. But if you want to go with that classic, like fingering and mohair or Surrey, I, I think it's beautiful. Um, so that was pattern number two. Pattern number three is by Fiber Tales. And so you've probably heard of Fiber Tales. She's quite popular on Instagram. She has a decent number of followers, um, but her designs are just so beautiful. Um, and the one that I'm going to be talking about today is the Humblebee socks. And so these are the cutest little socks. So my best friend loves bees. Um, so anything with bees, I'm like immediately drawn to. Um, and yeah, these socks are, you know, they're just knit in a sock weight yarn. Uh, they're knit on 2.25 millimeter needles. And I just think it's a nice balance between texture and being simple. Um, I do love colorwork socks. I never actually knit a pair. I think that they're very beautiful, but I think these, the subtle texture of the bees is just 
a nice a nice added touch to um, a plain pair of stockinette socks um, and I, I will definitely be knitting these at some point both for myself and then also for my best friend um, but yeah so oh the socks in case you're wondering the construction is toe up with a flegal heel construction so I I believe I've only done short row heel socks because that was the heel I first learned and then I automatically just knit that but I do want to try more different constructions of socks um i've actually also never done a toe up sock again i'm pretty new to the whole sock knitting thing i thought i'd be having like more on my needles but i've been definitely way more drawn to garments this spring and summer i should say this summer this spring i knit a few pairs of socks um oh and they are named humble or hum hummelbe 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 which is the word bumblebee in danish um so yes oh and she also has a hummelbee shawl but i'm focusing on my three patterns which the third one is the hummelbee socks and the gauge 30 stitches 44 rows per 10 centimeters and these came out last may um and the there are 51 projects on ravelry so those are my three patterns all good dress minnow cardigan and hummelbee socks I'm going to be focusing on two designers for my number two. And the first one that I want to talk about is Ulla Knitwear. So Ulla is a Norwegian designer, but she recently spent a large chunk of time in Portugal. She is somebody who has been quite open about her chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and I have one friend from high school who's dealing with this and it just seems like a very, very hard thing. I think I would have a very, very hard time with it as someone that's very active, but I think she does a great job at posting about it and giving herself grace and being compassionate to herself um, and just kind of like educating about it and like the role that knitting has helped in it. Um, anyways, she seems wonderful, but she creates these beautiful, like timeless, minimalist pieces that I've just, I've been so drawn to. Um, and so I want to say it's like, she's only really started doing designing in like the past year or so. Um, and so I'll review her current patterns that she has. So one, she is coming out with the Fjord T, um, which again, I, in my summer 20, yes, in my summer 2023 trends video, I talked about how classic tees are a huge trend this summer. And that it seems like everyone, everybody and anyone is designing a classic tee. And Illa Knitwear is no um, exception from that. So the Fjord T will be coming out. And I don't have the specs on it at the moment, but it does look beautiful. Again, that like nice oversized um, boxy fit. But the one pattern that I'm like oh, so obsessed with is the Mamba dress. Um, I just think it's so, so beautiful. I love that she gives options for different lengths and different fits in terms of positive, negative ease. I would love to knit this this fall <laughs> and I think I'd go with like the midi length and I think it would be so nice for a teacher, don't even have to think about it, outfit to wear in the fall and in, um, whatchamacallit, in the fall and in the winter. <laughs> the winter, how could I forget about the winter? But yeah, so she has the birch sweater is her most recent design and it is a raglan turtleneck nice oversized it has these like kind of bell sleeves um very pretty very classic i think it's a nice it kind of reminds me of the louvre sweater by petite knit um so if you wanted like an alternative for the louvre sweater but didn't want like want to support someone else other than petite knit the birch sweater would be a great option although i do believe it's held with mohair although you can always omit the mohair um so yeah she she held it with I've never heard of this yarn. I'm assuming it's Norwegian, but Unikt Garn and Silk Mohair, uh, sorry, they're Pure Merino by Unikt Garn and they're Silk Mohair by Unikt Garn. Um, and the gauge is 21 stitches. She has the Cloud Bralette, which I've also thought about knitting um, this summer, but it's again, a matter of time and what I, I have capacity for. And I'm focusing more on larger garments at the moment. Um, she has a cute little pouch called the Secura pouch. 
and she has a nice like lounge set um but i'm sure you could knit it her sample is in like a light gray with a, a blue and it's called the atlantis set um but i'm sure you could also knit it in like a navy or a dark brown or a dark gray and be able to wear those pants and like the pieces separately as like in a more professional business casual setting um maybe i don't know i feel like if you i probably wouldn't wear the set together to work but i feel like i'm thinking about knitting a pair of knitted pants again to have that versatility and knitted bottoms to wear instead of just knitted tops um and her first design that she came out with was the canopy scarf um but she yeah she currently has fjordi coming out she has the nata dress which i'm like ah it is so pretty um and then she also has this nice mock neck turtleneck that she is has has designed and she's looking for testers which she might have already found by the time this comes out but she is somebody that i think just has beautiful beautiful designs and if you want to invest at least my personal belief with knitting is i do like to do like the odd fun piece in there but most of the things that i knit i like them to be timeless and classic and that is what ulla knitwear is all about okay so my second designer that i wanted to talk about is nitalina and you've probably heard me talk about Nitarina if you've watched some of my other videos but man her patterns are just so so gorgeous she's someone let me just quickly look at her patterns um so her pa patterns are available ugh, her patterns are available in german i believe german and english um and so she currently only has four patterns that are available for purchase on her website, at least in English. Let me see if there's more in German. Okay, she has five sweaters available for purchase in German, I believe. Or Dutch. Or Dutch, I believe is German. In anyways, she has patterns available in English and Dutch. Um, but I'm currently test knitting her rapid top, which I've been loving. Um, I think it'll be so feminine and beautiful and it's, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a classic yet fun, trendy piece, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like tube tops have always kind of like been there in the background. I feel like they've had their moment where they've become big, but I do think that like a strapless top is always something that's like feminine and super fun for like a date night or something like that. Um, so she has that pattern that's currently in testing, test, yeah, that pattern that's currently in testing. She has her pearl tank, which again is like that high neck halter-ish style tank top. Um, that's kind of like the Soho top, but it does have this nice finishing, um, for the straps and the armhole edges. She has the summer tie top, which is this beautiful vest with cute little ties at the side to pull it in. It looks like you can make it adjustable and have less ease or more ease depending on how you're feeling it has i-cord ties and it looks like it's knit in brioche i want to say yes so it's knit in brioche looks very beautiful has some beautiful um detailing on the increases on the front um some wide shoulders i think it would be it, like i mean summer tie top describes it pretty well but a great summertime piece and i think it would be fun to like wear to the beach her chain sweater which is one that i um, purchased on her birthday sale. I'm planning to knit, I think, the long sleeve version this fall or winter. The chain sweater, like, it's just, it's beautiful. Hers, so how I kind of see Nitharina is Ulla Knitwear was like very sleek, timeless, minimalist. I would say Nitharina is like timeless but not minimalist. Like, she plays with texture, but it's super fun and but it's like fun and like eye catching but like in the best way possible in that i think you could wear it like over and over again um and like by over and over again i mean like year after year i think there'd be a time and place for it and her i'd say her patterns definitely air on the feminine side um and i absolutely love them and the last pattern is that she has available in english is the skirt full of cab cables pattern which is this beautiful knit skirt and it actually has pockets which like if you are someone that buys women's clothes, 
you will know the struggle of not having pockets in like anything you wear. And so her skirt was like, we're gonna be super feminine, we're gonna be super cute, and we're gonna have pockets because we're awesome. And I know in my Knitting Trends video, I talked about summer of POP, what's up? You know it. <laughs> And I'm actually going to be hosting a summer POP knit along and there'll be more details coming on that, but there's a the little tease. But yeah, I posted this like beautiful ruffle cardigan that she's been designing and a few of you were like, that is beautiful. Who is designing that? Nitharina. Nitharina is designing that. So that's the second designer that I wanted to highlight. And we've done the three, we've done the two, now it's down to the one, the yarn. So this is a yarn that I actually have in my stash. And it is Sweet Paprika Grazioso. So Sweet Paprika Grazioso is a silk and linen blend. It is 65% silk and 35% linen. It, this skein is 115 grams and there's approximately 690 meters in it. And it is light fingering slash heavy lace weight. And the recommended gauge is, or it's, yeah, recommended gauge is 24 to 30 stitches on 2.5 to 4 millimeter needles. And I got this from La La Babonese. La Babonese. La Babonese. La Babonese. Um, which is a brick and mortar shop in Montreal. And I've never been there, even though I was just in Montreal to race. I didn't have time to go to yarn shop, sadly. But yeah, I ordered this yarn when I ordered this cone. And I don't know, I, this yarn to me is like describing the summer fibers that like I want to knit with. I want to knit with more linens and more silks and here's the blend of just linen and silk. It's super soft yet I also think it'll have that nice breathability. I mean both silk and linen are quite breathable but I think this will be a very very nice summer garment. Um, I have no, I guess I have some idea what I want, want to knit with it. I'm thinking maybe camisole number seven by my favorite things knitwear but it's definitely one that I'm holding off on and I'll probably wait till next summer or like an early spring cast on. Um, and I went with just their natural color, um, just because I don't have a white knitted piece, but I think a white knitted piece would be really nice and really timeless. Sweet Paprika Designs is a company that was started in 2007 by two sisters. And they are a Canadian company, which to me as a Canadian, it's really awesome to port, it's really awesome to support Canadians. Um, I do love other yarns, but I'm always like super excited when I find a Canadian yarn that I want to knit with. Um, and so I was, I've supported a lot of, maybe not a lot, but I've supported Canadian local wool. Um, but I haven't supported a Canadian local, um, plant fiber. And I don't believe, I'm also so sorry if you can hear a slight buzzing in the background. It is the whippersnipper. Um, but I believe they're, so here it says, our yarns are sourced from around the world with fibers such as silk and camel from as far away as China and merino wool from South America. Um, our biggest focus is bringing attention to the high quality wools that are sustainably grown right here in Canada and offering yarns that are traceable all the way from farm to finished product. So they're very conscious about what their footprint is, who they're sourcing from, you know, how much people are making for getting good quality garments. Um, and they are, they do do like they're, they do some, uh, which we call it hand dyeing as well, based in Montreal. Um, and they did have a lot of beautiful colors available, but I wanted to go with just the natural base. Um, just because I do think that it's, I want a white top and I was super excited that they had this silk linen blend. Um, so I'm not sure where the linen comes from. For some reason, when I saw it on the Labonese, I thought that the linen was grown in Quebec, but I, I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I'm not sure where the linen comes from, but this is a yarn that I'm super excited to work with, although I don't know if I'll be working with it anytime soon. So 
that was my three, two, one, three patterns, two designers, and one yarn that I'm excited about at the moment. And so I also, with that being said, it is the end of the video. So if you are still here, thank you. And if you have not hit that like button or the subscribe button, I feel like you can definitely hear that. But yeah, if you haven't hit that like or subscribe button, please, please do. It would mean the world to me. I am so excited to continue to share here on YouTube and it definitely is more fun when there's more of you to watch and listen. So thank you. And till next time, bye. Oh, also before I go, let me know what you think of the three, two, one. And if there's anything that you'd like to see moving forward, I am always open to feedback. So yes, thank you and goodbye. Stay well, stay warm, stay hydrated. Wear your sunscreen and till next time, see ya.